So we're back with um, math and how we round with significant figures, this time with multiplication division. <clears throat> if you recall, when we have addition and subtraction, we round based on uh, decimal places. We want to have as many decimal places as the one with the fewest. When we're multiplying and dividing, it's not decimal places at all. It's all about significant figures. <clears throat> so to do uh, math with math, multiplication division, which is what we do a lot more of in, in chemistry than addition and subtraction, the rounding will be based on significant figure rules. For multiplication and division, the rule is this. When multiplying and dividing, your answer should have as many significant figures as the original value with the fewest significant figures. It sounds a little bit like addition and subtraction, but it's all about decimal places there. This is about significant figures. So when multiplying and dividing, your answer should be rounded so that it has as many significant figures as the original value with the fewest significant figures. So for example, if we have 2.89 times 4.01, we can punch that into our calculator and get an answer, and your calculator will spit out 11.5889, which is great and really precise. But because 2.89 has just three significant figures, and because 4.01 has just three significant figures. Our answer also <clears throat> may have only three significant figures. So again, like, I want to go back to review just momentarily. The decimal point is present in each of these values, so I would count from left to right. One, two, three significant figures. 4.01 also, one, two, three significant figures. And so my answer needs to have just three. Now, how many does my answer have currently? Well, again, the decimal point is present, so I'll count from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six significant figures. That's no good. Okay, that's way too many. We need to have our answer rounded off so that it has only three. So 11.5889 would be rounded off so that it has just three. And that would be to the third position, which would be right here. A third significant figure position, which is in the tenth place. So 11.5889 will actually round up to 11.6, right? Our official round off answer will have one, two, three significant figures, just like it should. All right, so just again to, to review the rule, your answer should have as many significant figures, in this case that's three, as the original value with the fewest. This had three significant figures, this had three significant figures, and so our answer must also have three significant figures, and now it does. Any better than that, and you've created more precision than you're allowed to have. You've somehow got an answer that's more precise than your original stuff. And the old, the old rule that I've always heard um, that sort of applies here is you can't make chicken soup out of chicken poop. We can't make a quality, a great quality uh, answer out of poor quality measurements. Or we can't make the answer any better than the original measurements were. Uh, so we can't create more precision than we were given. Three significant figures is the best we can do. Let's look at a couple of other examples. <clears throat> Here's 123,000 times 3,234. I'm going to grab my calculator for this and put the numbers up on the screen with you so you can see uh, the math as it's adding up in my screen. 123,000 times 3,234 gives us an answer of 397782. 000. zero, zero. That's a bunch. Huh? Three nine seven seven eight two zero zero zero. That's got a lot of significant figures in it. If we want to take a look at that really closely here, there's no decimal point in the way that it's written, right? So if we're counting significant figures there, we would count across from the Atlantic side with the first non-zero, which would be our two, and there would be six significant figures in that answer the way that it's written. We're not permitted to have. Um, six significant figures, we can only have as many as the original value with the fewest, which was what? Well, back here, 123,000 has, because the decimal point is absent, just three significant figures. And 3,234, with the decimal point absent, has four significant figures. Three significant figures here, four significant figures here, it means our answer can only have three, the fewest. So we need to round 397,782,000 so that it has just three significant figures. 397,782,000. 397,782,000. Well, to have that round off to just three significant figures, we're going to round it off to the third significant figures position, which is right there. So that seven needs to be rounded. Everything after it will be kind of dropped out and replaced with placeholder zeros. 
Am I going to round the seven up to an eight or leave it as a seven? Well, right behind it is a seven, which means it rounds up. And so this answer will be rounded off to be three, nine, eight. But don't forget, you don't just round off and shave everything else off as if it's gone. You replace those following digits with place holding zeros. And be very careful at the end that you do not add a decimal point. If you were to put a decimal point on the end, that would suddenly make all of those zeros count as precise because you'd be counting from the Pacific side. By leaving the zeros and no decimal place at the end, they're there as placeholders and they're not precise. They're not counted as significant figures. <clears throat> 398 million has just one, two, three significant figures. That's just exactly what we want. Okay? And so 398 million would be our final answer from this math here. 1.23, our next example, 1.23 times 0.89. Our answer can only have two significant figures because 0.89 has just two significant figures. So if we go back to our calculator, 1.23, let me move that out of the way here, 1.23 times 0.89 gives us 1.0947. Well, we can't have all that. We can only have two significant figures. How would I round 1.0947 off to have two significant figures. Well, I'd round it off to 1.1, right? Not 1.0 because the zero would round up to a one based on that nine. But 1.1 is about the same as 1.0947. 1.1 has two significant figures. That would be pro appropriate. 1.0947 had five, too many, okay? On our next example in division, it's exactly the same. Just make sure you watch for that division symbol. 24.595 divided by 5.34 gives us 4.6580524. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of precision. We can't have all that. Our answer may have only three significant figures because our 5.34 has one, two, three significant figures, right? This one has five, but that's more. 5.34 with just three significant figures is our limiting number and it tells us that our answer can only have three significant figures as well. So I'm going to round 4.605805, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to round that off to three significant figures, 4.61, right? Round the zero up to one, again, like in the last one. So 4.61 has three significant figures. And our final example here, 923. 923 divided by 20312. And our answer comes out to be 0 0.04544111185. Holy smokes, again, a lot of precision. Calculators can just go on forever because they don't know when to quit. Our answer, though, needs to have three significant figures because 923 has one, two, three significant figures. The other value has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. But our answer should have just three. So we're going to take 0 0.04544111, and that's a lot of extra stuff after that. We're going to take all that and round it off to have three significant figures. 0 0.0454, okay? 0 0.0454 has three significant figures. Again, make sure you're counting them carefully with the decimal point present. Oops. We're going to count from left to right with the first non-zero being where we start counting. So don't start counting this zero as significant. Remember, that's not significant, and this zero is not. We start counting with the first non-zero, so that four, five, four, those are significant. This now has three significant figures, or we call them for short, sig figs. Three significant figures, the zeros being placeholders and the four, five, four being precise. I'll have a lot of folks who will know that they should have three significant figures in their answer and they'll give me 0 0.04 thinking that it has three. Be really careful when you double check in your answers. Does that actually have three significant figures? Nope, just one, okay? And so that's not gonna give us the, the answer that we need. 0 0.0454 gives me those three significant figures that I'm allowed to have and actually required to have in my finished answer. So here are a few more examples for multiplication and division. Just gonna run through these with you rather quickly. 12.34 divided by 6.29. 12.34 divided by 6.29. And our answer should have how many significant figures? Hopefully you said three, because 6.29 has three. And so I'm gonna take 1.961844 and so on, and round it off to 1.96. Okay, 1.96. I don't round the six up because it's followed by a one. I just round everything else off to, and I take, take it off 
and then leave it as 1.96. So 1.96, three significant figures. Our next example is a, a multiplication problem, 0 0.00402 times 13 times 4,306. Now 13 has just two significant figures, so my answer should have just two significant figures. My answer comes out on the calculator as 225.03156. Okay. That has a whole bunch more significant figures than were allowed. How would I round that off so that it would have just two? Well, 225 still has three, but 230 does not, right? 225 has three significant figures. That's one more than I'm allowed to have, no good. 230 is okay, rounded off to the tens position and has just two significant figures. No decimal point can be written on there because that would give me three again, and then I should have just stuck with 225. But to have two significant figures, 230 would give me that precision, two significant figures. And again, that's matching up with my 13, which has two significant figures in the answer as well, or in the, in the value as well. Now, on the next line, you see the same numbers, essentially, put together again, multiplication-wise. But now I've got 13.00. Now, this number has four significant figures. That's adding precision. This still has four significant figures, just like it did in the, in the line above. And this first, line, first value still has just three significant figures, just like it did up here. Right? Except now, because this has three significant figures, that's our limiting value. That's going to say my answer can now have three significant figures. We've improved the 13 by putting zeros behind it. We made a measurement with a better, we made a measurement with a better value. And, and now that 13 isn't the weakest link. It's actually one of the strong ones. This first value of my number becomes the weakest link. And my answer should now have three significant figures. Well, in that case, I'm still going to get in my calculator and get the same result but now I can have three significant figures. And so instead of having to round that off, let me get this up here, instead of having to round that off to 230, I can leave it as 225. That can actually show up in my answer. I can round it uh, less and leave it more precise, 225, three significant figures. That looks better, huh? If you don't have to round it off to 230 and you can actually show us that it's 225, then your, your uh, answer is more precise and of a better quality. If we could have even more significant figures, then we could go into the decimal places and it would get better and better. We just keep on going from there. That's it for our examples. Uh, you'll have some to practice on your own and hopefully you'll have good luck with those. But again, make sure to count uh, significant figures, find the weakest one, and round your answer based on that. Be really careful on those significant figure counts. If you're still having trouble with how many significant figures are in a value, make sure and go back and review that last video or see me for extra help too. And uh, we'll get you scored away. It's going to be a lot of very simple math in chemistry, but the general rule is you'll always have to round based on significant figures. So the sooner you master this and can start practicing it and getting good at it, uh, the, the more uh, comfort you'll have with it and the more confident you'll be in your answers being right just every time as we go throughout the year. They say practice makes perfect. In fact, perfect practice makes perfect. And I want you to have good practice along the way from the very beginning and not stumble over significant figures. Let's get this mastered quick. See me if you need help. Thanks.